All right, Uncle Sam FM here, and I have started a new series. I do still have my other one, my um, series I was running with East Tennessee State, but I am starting the Iron Manager series. It's kind of a journeyman save, but I wanted to start an MLS and play with uh, with an MLS team for a few seasons, build a, build a club in Major League Soccer, and I'm using an updated version of my database file, which includes um, some, well, some pretty cool changes, I think, anyway. It, it, uh, first of all, it made it, I found a way to prevent teams from, uh, professional teams from signing players away from the college teams. So this will um, improve the draft stock, for one. Uh, it also, it's just more realistic, right? Because you don't have, usl championship team signing players away from college that's just not how it works in real life so that was a big um a big change that i was able to make also goofy stuff like graphics are all up to date now um from uh from previous versions of the database file so uh including colors a couple teams added third kits whatever um and really i just kind of wanted to you know start an mls save I, it, it, that takes advantage of some of those changes so there's that's where we're at. I am using, again, Tony Stark. So this is the Iron Manager series. Um, and he will start with Nashville SC. Now, kind of the cool thing with the Nashville SC is that they don't actually enter MLS in 2019. They will begin play in MLS in 2020. That means that I have a year to build the team that I want to start MLS play. But with my database file, I have added the USL Championship, which is where Nashville plays. And it is a real-life format, um, same teams that were in USL in 2019. <clears throat> so um, get a chance to get a look at some of the guys that were on the squad at the beginning of the save, beginning of the actual game, and decide if I you know, want to um, keep those players or um, maybe make some changes. So, um, with that said, here I am at the opening screen. Um, Nashville SC appointing, you know, naming, me, announcing Tony Stark as the uh, the new manager. Um, we'll kind of just go through this. <clears throat> so, beginning, um, they start play at Nissan Stadium. That's where they will play in MLS. Now, it says that I, I have set it up in my database to where actually the first season I'll be playing in, in a baseball stadium called First Tennessee Park, which was that's real life. Um, then my first year in MLS, I will play in Nissan Stadium before moving to the uh, Nashville, the stadium that Nashville SC is building in real life. I believe it'll open up in 2022, I think. Um, so, but this here, we get a, get a look a little bit at some of the, uh, history of the team founded in 2017. Uh, actually be the, the, the Nashville soccer club, uh, there was a national FC that started, I think back in 2014, um, with some, uh, local fans actually started the team. It's kind of a cool story and maybe we'll, I'll go into it a little bit, uh, in at some point during the save, but, uh, the Nashville Metros shut down. They were played in the lower levels of U.S. soccer. And uh, a group of fans got together and said, hey, let's, let's have a fan, let's, let's get a fan movement going to start a team. They started the Nashville FC. Um, and now that team has grown, which it started at really kind of at the bottom. And now it's grown to, to the point where they were granted their own MLS franchise. Um, <clears throat> so we'll move on to the next. It says uh, this is a look at my team, uh, and by the way, this is the default um, team that you get when you start a game. I didn't make any changes to the squad. Um, some of these guys I recognize: Lovitz, Nashville SC got Daniel Lovitz. All right, he is a national team player. He's got yeah eight caps. So that'll, you know, we'll, we'll dive into the squad as we move forward. Does say I'm fairly determined. I have a hot prospect of Derek Jones. We'll look at all these guys. Um, David Akam, of course, is the key player. Um, Five-year plan, work within the payroll budget. Uh, they want me to reach the round of 16 this year in the Open Cup. That's a big ask because 
I, technically this year I'm a USL championship team. I'm not an MLS team, and there are 24 teams in MLS. Um, so that means I would have to get further than at least nine MLS teams. USL championship regular season. They want me to win the USL championship regular season. They want me to. They want me to win the league at the end of this season. Um, and they're not looking beyond 2020. So I'll accept that. So here's a look at the squad that I have so far. Um, I've sorted it by my assistant's opinion of their, or my scout's opinion of their uh, current ability. Um, Mukhtar looks pretty good. Uh, you know, determination is not overwhelmingly high, but uh, I'd say that's, you know, the rest of his attributes are. Uh, he's got a high technique, good first touch, um, decent dribbler. You know, for, for MLS, these are pretty good ratings for most of these attributes, so we'll take that. Um, he's only 23 years old. He is, uh, his contract, um, he is, I'm not sure, I don't think he's occupying a DP. It's hard to tell because USL contracts are different than uh, MLS. Oh, he is, yeah, so he is occupying a DP slot, which is fine. Um Good player. Dax McCarty, he's a uh, MLS journeyman. You can tell from his career stats. He started FC Dallas way back in 06. And he's, you know, he's a good, solid player. Um, high determination, you know, a pretty good work rate. And that's kind of how I would describe McCarty in real life. He, you know, he's a good, um, he does the dirty work in the midfield. Um, so he's, you know, he's, he's solid, which is good. I, I, I feel good about the the spine of this team um with mccarty with mukhtar with mccarty uh godoy who is a panamanian central midfielder uh you know decent tackler he'll probably play my number six position uh or i could move him up to the eight if i need to maybe let mccarty play the six um mccarty's tackling is only a 13 but you know what that determination you know makes that a better rate you know than the number would indicate um, goal scoring wise, David Akam, good player. He's, uh, he's got good physicals, right? His, and good physicals and a 13 finishing will make him a viable option at any of the front three spots, which I, I like to play at four, three, three, um, a sort of a, it depends on the opposition, but I, I like to play with, uh, you know, your pep style four, three, three. I might do a 4-2-1-3 with two holding mids, and we'll look at tactics here in a little bit. But uh, looking at the team at the top, I feel pretty good. Um, defense is a concern, right? I've got, uh, you know, Nazaree is my best center back, according to my scouts. Um, I would prefer him to be a little better with the ball at his feet. You know, determination, vision are not great. Uh, only a 10 work rate. Strength 13. He, he's he's not bad. Right? He's not terrible. But you know what? I want my number one center back to be a little better. He's you know somewhat tall at six, at six foot one. Good news is, Scout says he could get better. He's only 21. So that those are good news. Uh, I do like this Madranda guy. He's got a he's got a long term injury though. Uh, eight, out eight to ten months. So he won't do me any good this season. But looking ahead. Uh, he's somebody that can play <clears throat> at left back and then all the way up, right, if I wanted him to, or he can play center mid. So I, I can see him playing as a number eight. Um, he, he, he's a kind of a versatile player, right, so that will help a little bit. I like guys who play lots of positions. Um, also, Daniel Lovitz is another interesting candidate. He plays left back. He, you know, I can, there's hope I could retrain him to play right back if I had to. But he, this is a national team player. He is 27, um, so he's probably got a good couple of years in him. Uh, might, you know, eventually at some point look to move him along. Uh, 27 is when I, I like to have guys sold by 27, <laughs> 27, 28. But that's just sort of my own personal transfer philosophy. Um, goalkeeper, former don't, uh, Houston Dynamo Joe Willis. Uh, he'll get it done, you know, again. Oops, that's not him. That's not him either. Uh, there he is, Joe Willis. Um, he's uh, you know solid, 
you know, not anything special. Uh, I, I feel like there's like this group right here from Nazarite down to Rios. These are guys that will I can put in there and they'll get the job done. But they're not, you know, I, I can upgrade, right? I, these guys are, they're placeholders. That's a good way to think of it. Placeholders until I get better options. Um, so, yeah, this is a team that we should do well in USL. I should, you know, win most of my matches in USL. I'm thinking that I should at least win 20 to 25 of the 34 USL games. Uh, and then... Now, going into MLS, I probably am going to have to make some improvements to the squad, <clears throat> especially down here at the bottom. Uh, you know, Potential-wise, this uh, Jack uh, Marr, he's you know relatively high potential. Uh, he is an American, which is good. That means he's a domestic player. He's not going to eat up one of my international slots. He's got very high determination. I need to get his work rate up. Teamwork needs to get better. Um vision needs to get a lot better i know for a center back that's not always a big whatever uh attribute that you need to but i like my guys to be able to my center backs to be able to play with the ball um and right now i can't trust him to to pass the ball to the goalkeeper forget about passing it up to the you know midfield or bypassing the midfield to the wing so um but you know there's at least some hope there I don't know how what your guys experience. I've never had a player with a one vision at any position, so I can't imagine. I don't know how difficult that's going to be to whatever to improve. Um, other uh, potential guys, I do kind of like the look of this Daniel Rios. My scout is telling me that he that he's as good as he's going to get. Um, so, you know, it may be a lost cause, but it, he's only twenty three, uh, but he's got a fourteen finishing. Which you know, for the number nine position, that's you wanted him to be the guy that scores goals. Uh, and then obviously Leal, he's the Costa Rican. Uh, Nashville, um, where do they bring him in from? Doesn't even say. Where is his crew stats? Brought him in from Saprissa, right? So that's a big club in Costa Rica. He's got, um, you know, he's got some good attributes for a guy who can play at either of the wing positions in my four-three-three. Uh, very good passing, right? So that's encouraging so that's a look at the squad i you know a lot of times on these series is these this is that's kind of the most boring thing oh bikelis and i'm sure i'm mispronouncing some of these he's 33 years old but he will definitely help get me through this year and maybe next year right back so uh yeah good squad i i feel good about it at least for this season <clears throat> definitely gonna have to make some improvements before we move into mls so here's a quick look at the tactics I plan on employing with Nashville SC. I'm, you know, like everybody else, I do like a version of Tiki Taka. Um, and of course, a lot of people this year, they've gone with the Gigan Press, and it obviously works. I think Gigan Press might be the most effective style in the game. But I sort of base the way my teams play in FM on how I kind of coach my real-life teams and this no exception um i i've kind of gone to whatever this style of play and it's you know high press keep the ball um i, I try to recreate ball circulation um how the teams attack certain zones all of that obviously in fm it's not you can't it's different it's you can't really do it in fm the way you do it in real life but this is I feel like the closest I've been able to to whatever get to that, and so obviously it's you know it's a four three three. Uh, the fullbacks are pushed up into the wingback strata, and then I'm doing my midfield triangle here with a six, an eight, and a ten. The two wingers, the striker, and I've tried to balance as much as possible the way the teams play, or the way the players uh, interact with each other. Got uh, wing backs. I've got one on support, one on defend. But obviously, the one on defend, he's a wing back, so he's going to get forward, especially when when the winger cuts in, which happens when you when he pushes into the final third. Then on the right, I've got a wing back on support, so he'll get forward a little more. Uh, on the left, I've got my the you know, you've got the ten there, so he is going to kind of occupy a lot of this space. So uh, this is. 
to me, one of the more entertaining styles of play, NFM. Uh, I don't do a lot of individual instructions, but there are some. One thing I do like to do, I like to have a, I like to have a defensive triangle. So guy and FM. So these are the, and clearly it's you know the six and the two center backs, right? So what I have them do is close down less, right? And so what happens is they don't go rushing out of position. They kind of hold their spots. So you've got that defensive triangle in the very back. And for me, in my experience. It, she, it, um, I say she, I don't know why I said she. Well, hey, I'm a guy, right? We're always thinking about chicks. He, so the midfield triangle, in my experience, prevents, when you, when you have them closing down less, not rushing out of position, you've got that solid, uh, whatever, group of players who you're making them execute, right? well you keep space tightened up right you're not giving the attackers open space so by reducing that space it makes it harder on the on the other team's attack so just in my experience in fm going all the way back to like fm05 if you've got that midfield triangle not midfield defensive triangle then the number of chances the other team is able to produce is is less right so uh, that's um, that's what I've always done. Still do it. Still seems to work, right? So uh, those are one, you know. And then I also have guys closing down more. I have them passing shorter, right? Because we're trying to keep possession. I do let my number eight pass a little more direct, so that the idea is he can spread the ball around. He's kind of a deep lying playmaker, and so that's a couple of other uh, formations that I use. I've got one formation and. So this is this is sort of my base tactic, right? The four-three-three. If they come at me with a single striker, and then this is what I use, the this four-three-three. If I'm playing against a team who plays with like a four, like a diamond, so a, a number ten, an attacking center mid, and two strikers, I go with this formation, and this is a four-three-three where with the defense with the midfield triangle flipped upside down. Right, so that the number eight drops back to the defensive mid strata, as you can see right here, and then the number ten is, is moves to the middle. So, the, kind of my reason behind this is I want to outnumber that attacking trio. It, right, so you get two strikers and an attacking mid. Now I've got four guys back there, obviously for defensive purposes, but then also they can knock the ball around between themselves a little easier. We can build up a little better. They're not under as much pressure. Somebody is going to kind of be open. That's sort of the idea, right? So that's what I use that against any formation with a center mid, with a center attacking mid and two strikers. And then I've got, this is a version of the 3-4-3. Obviously it looks just like the 4-3-3, but what happens is the center back, or the sorry, the number six, the half is a halfback, so he drops back with the two central defenders. And I use this whenever I'm playing against a team that has two strikers but no attacking center mid. So like a flat four four two, right, or three five two. This is this is what I'll use. Um, and the idea there is, so I've got three players defending against their striking pair. And this is these are the players that I've used. We'll go look at the squad so that you can see who. Again, this is preliminary. Uh, I've got uh, Willis, my starting goalkeeper. My two center backs are Nazarit and Ani Baba. Although the truth is, um, where is he? Uh, Romney will. That's kind of. I've got three guys that will play that two man back roll. Honestly, Ani Baba, uh, he is just kind of a. Uh, I'm trying him out, right? Like I like his uh, tackling and his defending a little better, uh, especially his physicals. But if he, if I see that he is not going to work out there, then I'm going to Romney's going to move right in, and Ani Baba is, is about depth. Bekelis at right back looks good. Obviously, he's a little older. I need to replace him immediately. <laughs> Godoy is going to right for now. He's going to play the six with McCarty playing the eight. And then I've got Mukhtar playing the 10. And at uh, right at left back, I've got Daniel Lovitz, uh, an American 
national team player, so that's a nice little addition to have. And then my wingers, Leal, I've, I like his passing. I've got to get him on the field. Right? His vision's not great. Decisions are okay, but that passing attribute is, is good enough to kind of pull those others up, and his training, I'm going to get him to whatever, pass the ball better. And then on the other, on the left side, uh, Badji, Badji will um, hopefully use, you know, he's got good physicals and good work rate. So hopefully he can, we can make some things happen up front. And then a cam, uh, I'm playing, I'm going to play him as my center striker. He's got, you know, his, his physical, that 17 is really good. And that 14 dribbling. Uh, and he does have a higher finishing than the two wingers. So, I'm going to put him there for now, although I might end up playing Donlati at striker. The only problem really with him is that 12 finishing is kind of low for a striker. So that's the tactics that I'm looking to employ and the players who have kind of, for at least for the time being, slotted in there. All right, so a quick look at the training that I do. I um, have kind of a system. So uh, I have a screen set up. Uh, view for that's just training and the way I do it I've first of all I, I have certain attributes that I like for my entire team to be strong at uh, a lot of uh, FM players out there you know they've this is not anything that I invented um, it's wherever the club DNA and the six attributes that I want my players to have to be the strongest at is determination work rate Composure, teamwork, decisions, visions, and stamina. <clears throat> Each one for a reason. I, I obviously with the way we play, we want to press. You know, we want to we want to press high up the pitch, which means hey, we are going to be working hard in defense. So we're not going to sit back. We're going to be aggressive. We're going to push the envelope. Whatever cliche you want to attach to it. So they need to have a high work rate. And they need to be have high stamina, right? Because they're going to be running all over the pitch pretty much any time that we don't have the ball. And when we have the ball, I want us to be good at keeping possession, right? I, and I say that, but it's not just about keeping possession. I want them to move the ball, to build up play, to create chances, Right, and then that you know, obviously that's part of that is having the ball and, and making um, making every touch count. So that means they need good vision and they need good decision making and they need good teamwork. Right, so those three attributes very important for in my whatever belief and others. Th those attributes are important at every position, no matter where you are. Right, now the obvious attribute is passing. You want to have a good passing attribute. And I'll train for that. But those are the, those six attributes there are important. And then I add the seventh is determination. Determination is just one of those, uh, whatever you want to call it. It's a um, it's an intangible attribute, right? It's, it's, it's an attribute that if a player is highly determined, they are going to be they're going to do the little things right they're going to work harder on the pitch so i you know, determination is important uh it's you know for 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 i believe for every player and a lot of times if i'm trying to decide if i've got two players vying for the same position determination is going to be the deciding factor that's going to be what what the final attribute i look at like these two guys look about even who's got the higher determination okay then this guy is the starter so um so yeah so i've got those seven attributes so when i go to training I, I, i'm looking to develop those i want those attributes to, all of my training schedules to to work those so when i in my, in my training view i have i've got it set up to where i can choose their position role duty and then also their extra focus so each position has a position role duty that I believe, well, that, it's not that I believe, it's the, that, that will work those seven main attributes. So, for example, um, goalkeeper's not a great example. Let's look at fullback. All right, so I want my fullbacks or wingbacks 
uh, obviously to be aggressive and so when I'm I choose and what I found is the inverted wing back attack works most of those attributes so we'll take off his additional focus for now so you can see okay it works it works his um, passing which is important um, it works composure works decisions it works his teamwork work rate and stamina now it doesn't affect his his vision so I have to find a focus that will help that all right. And another thing that it does not work is determination, but there are no training schedules or whatever that work determination, unfortunately. You have to get that through mentoring and there's other ways, but training can't make it happen. Inverted wingback, though, allows me to work the most of those, and I can, I can train vision by adding the passing focus. Right? So now it's working as vision while also, hey, bonus, working passing attribute and technique. Okay, another uh, position that, uh, you know, just whatever, throwing it out there. Uh, um, Anunga, he, uh, he, I've got him training at the number six. So I choose the uh, deep lying playmaker, defend, and we'll take off the endurance for now. And you can see, works his vision, works decisions, passing part is, you know, obviously that's not one that I... Uh, stamina does not right so i've got to find something to work his stamina that's why i had it on endurance that will work on his stamina right so so that's what i do with every position i've got I, i've got those the club dna uh attributes I, you know i want my club to be the strongest in the league at those seven overall and so i've all of these training setups for each player, each individual player, is meant to work each of those. Right? So, striker, false nine on support with endurance. Wingers, advanced playmaker, endurance. Um, attacking mids, the Carrillo works all works everything. I don't even have to for the Carrillo. I don't have to work any extra attributes so what I do is I choose, I let them work on corners so that they can deliver my corner and hopefully we get some uh, we get some you know improve, improve his corner attribute well enough to where we get some goals there right so so that's what I do with training as far as my team um, schedules um, I you know don't do anything fancy there I it's pretty standard you know during the preseason i'm working physical and tactical i want to get them ready to play right ready to hit the ground running on day one uh early season training kind of i'm looking at um technique right so i'm working there you know attacking te and defending techniques i do sprinkle in some some tactical stuff uh and then once i get into the season um, through the early part of the season, I start working on your more whatever nuanced um, technique. I said te technique, tactical is what I work on in the early season. Technique is what I work on throughout the year. Uh, and I've got different schedules for it. I don't do anything like the stuff you can get from, you can download is probably better. And actually, you can just let the assistant do it. It'll be do as well. I, I whatever. I, I like to mess with every little component in the game. So that's one of the things that I do there. So I think that'll kind of set us up. I've got some things I've got to do. Uh, I've got to get some staff, right? I've got, uh, I need to get ahead of youth development. I need to find it. I don't think I'm going to get a technical director, but I do need to get some scouts. I need a data analyst and head of sports science and a sports scientist. So that'll be priority need to get my scouting in place uh in a future episode we'll look at that uh, i i gotta schedule some friendlies i don't believe i even have uh, yeah i don't have i've only got one friendly scheduled against my two squad and then i am playing in the preseason tournament in the atx pro challenge uh, i'll start against atlanta united in the semifinal. it's a one-off competition there is a third place game so even if i lose i'll have I'll, i'm guaranteed in a second game so I've got, but I, that's obviously not going to be enough to get me ready. I've got to schedule some friendly. So the second episode, we'll look at that. It'll maybe, maybe I'll just go right through the preseason and I'll show you my staff that I hired uh, and I'll show you the preseason results. And then we'll live com this big game against Louisville. Louisville is one of the top teams in the USL championship.
Look real quick at there. Yeah, they've won the USL Cup twice, 2017. They're the defending champions going into this 2019 season. So <clears throat> that's a big... Uh, John Hackworth is a very well-experienced coach, manager. Uh, we'll look at his history. See how much they've got in there. Yeah, see, he's, he's coached the uh, youth national program. He used to coach the union, Philadelphia Union and MLS. So he's a well-traveled coach. So that's a big challenge to start the season. Uh, we'll, we'll just go ahead and plan on live comming that game. So this is Uncle Sam FM signing off for my Iron Manager series. I'll see you next time.